So, Coach, these guys on the offensive line at, at Kansas won't mm -hmm. be the biggest you've played, yeah. but tell me what they do because they do some different stuff, right? Yeah, man, they're, they're a bunch as well, Coach. You can see that. They're going to be disciplined. They're going to do what they're asked to do. They're going to be who they're supposed to be. You know, a lot of times you get out there on that grass, you make a lot of adjustments. You can see in-game things that they're correcting and getting better as the game goes on. I think that's helped them versus multiple fronts that they've seen. Have you seen them adapt to it and still get positive yardage on the ground? You, uh, we heard earlier in the week from another coach that uh, it's – they do some stuff sort of like Air Force or some of the other mm -hmm. academies because they yeah. are undersized. Are you seeing that too? Again, I just I say it's, it's being well coached and adapting to the defense. They've seen four down, they've seen three down, they've seen speed, they've seen size, and you can just see them change it up week by week, um, and those players adapt to it well. Um, so it is a multiple, a lot of eye candy, but you got to do your job. You know, come down to it, you got to do your job. Tackle, you're supposed to tackle and chase, you're supposed to chase. Yeah, kinda, and they got athletes doing it. You kind kind of like, uh, you know, an offense kind of goes as well as a quarterback goes. Mm -hmm. An offensive line sometimes goes as good as the center is. Mm -hmm. And Kansas has a good one, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They have some talent all across that board, man. And everything's led to that cue, man. He's a special player. And sometimes me being a former player, I just like watching ball players. You see him do some things with their rock, you know, that you just go, wow. You know, just watching him play. He's comfortable. You know what I mean? He plays he behind those guys, and they do a good job passing things off and just being disciplined. What kind of challenge does it bring when you guys have to face a, a guy that can run the ball like he can? Uh, it's like, again, it makes us be disciplined because a lot of times we say 11 on 11, but you don't expect him to be involved in the run game. And you're seeing that more and more in these offenses. So it makes everybody have eye discipline, be what they're supposed to be. Um, up front, we know what our keys are. In the back end, they know what their keys are. What's your assessment on how the D lines kind of perform this first quarter of the season? Man, it's been phenomenal for me. Like I said, coming in this place was an honor. Um, but seeing them buy into me and buy into our new system, which they haven't been playing in, that's step one to those guys, man, credit to them. Um, but then just the effort, man, it's relentless. They're a gelled group that they're getting closer and closer by the day and by the week. It don't matter who's in there, who's rolling in there. It's one standard, you know, having as many seniors in my room as I do. You know, I have four guys that'll be playing their last college, college snaps here this season. So it's some attention to focus um, and holding that standard high of, just winning the ball game ain't enough to those guys no more. They played a lot of football. Um, they want to win championships. You know, they want to leave a legacy for their families to be proud of. So um, my room kind of follows their lead when it comes to that. So week in and week out is very, very docked in on the details of what do we need to do to win. And whatever that is, they're ready to do it. There was a play in the uh, second half where Bevel's in at quarterback, and he, mm -hmm. I think it was like a third and three, third and four maybe, and he's rolling out to the right trying mm -hmm. to run it for the first half. Yeah. And Caleb Fox yeah. chases him down. There's a guy – talk about how he's improved since Man, it's, I think he's just getting comfortable. I mean, he's a guy that has some extreme physical traits. I mean, he can squat the house when he goes in the weight room. I mean, you've seen it on that play. You know, all D linemen take pride when a Q has the ball and he's trying to stiff on him. So it was a little bit – Ancy there, he, he hopped up with a little bounce because the guy trying to stiff on him. But, I mean, those guys, it's just their urgency. All of them play hard. And I think after the fact, they see those snaps and see themselves run and go, wow, that's me. But uh, we know that they have those traits. It's just kind of that opportunity to go make a play. You know what I mean? And that was a special one. I think Dylan had a one very similar, the same way, just run things out. And anytime you see a big man making plays out there on the numbers. I mean, I'm going to celebrate that. There, there was another one in the first half, I think it was, where Dom chases a guy mm -hmm. in front of the TCU bench. Yeah. Doesn't quite catch up yeah. to him, but just the effort. Yep. Yeah. I, I will give that to a credit to, like, the depth in the room. Because being a defensive lineman, if you watch some of those plays on Sunday, to be honest, some guys that hesitant to go outside the hash, you play a lot of snaps, and they trust the, the guys that's behind them. So I tell them, I don't care if you get tired in one play or if you get tired in ten plays. You let me know if you're tired, I'm going to sub you out. So having depth behind them creates that kind of – mentality of that I can go exalt everything and know that it's not gonna hurt my team the next play. If I gotta come out after one play, come on out. You know, we'll put somebody else in there that's ready to roll. So credit to the entire room. You mentioned the uh the senior group, mm -hmm. but Dominic Williams is making quite an impact too as a young yeah. player. What yeah. what are your thoughts just watching him and how he's developed? Yeah, that's that's the puppy. I call him puppy, but I mean he's just he's physically gifted. You know, he's one of those guys that's extremely strong, one of the strongest guys on the team plays well balanced, you know, he's just solid through and through, plays square, so he sees a lot of it. And I think that's the most intriguing thing about him is playing square. He's allowed to fill a lot of blocks before seeing him. He just naturally feels gap schemes, um, knows how to transition his way through through the inside soles of his feet. He's just a special candidate. You know, he's a true nose firm body, but he also has some twitch when he wants to turn over um, in a powerful in a, in a pass game. But just just who he is, you know, that kid is doing everything right off the grass too. So it, it just Works out on the field as well. You gain trust with him 
outside of the meeting room, it's going to show up on the grass. What do you guys have to do to be successful against Kansas? Uh, again, discipline. Discipline is a thing, man. Play hard, you know. Um, eliminate any kind of penalties and just do your job. You know, Coach preaches it over and over again. I mean, this this sport, for one, it's the ultimate team sport. And you got to trust the guys next to you to do what they're supposed to do. So, in this game, it's no different. Just play hard, be ready to roll, and just do your job. From a defensive line perspective, I know fans and media can look at it from, hey, how many sacks did they get? How, how do you define success uh, for you guys uh, as a defensive line in any um, game? The ultimate success, I think, for, for us and like, is coming from your teammates. Like, you can see how they play with comfort if you're doing your job. So the very first few snaps of the game, it starts with physicality. I'm going to stand right down that line. I'm going to stand right down the line of scrimmage, and I'm not looking at technique. I'm seeing if we're knocking people back. That's step one. My guys know that. I want to be physical and not be thinking. But then your teammates are going to play more comfortable when they know your feet are always going forward. So we know we don't get all the stats. We're not going to be at the top of the charts every week of what people are looking for. But when your teammates come by you and slap you on the hip, man, and go, man, I appreciate you. I owe you. You know, you guys play hard. Y'all whooped them. Like, that's the ultimate success for the room. You know, I think getting that mentality is, is the first piece as a coach is learning how to apply those other things, learning how to apply a double team split, even if you didn't make the play. Learning how to apply great effort, running down and forcing people out to your people on the back end. Like, that's just as exciting to me as a sack. A batted ball, forcing a high throw, that's interception. Like, we've done a great job of letting them know that's your stat too. You may not show up on the stat sheet, but forcing a high throw for somebody to get underneath it. Like, we celebrate that, you know, and them seeing that success and collapsing the pocket and making the quarterback disrupting them, making them uncomfortable. Like, we cheer for those things. So, just making them proud to get those, those statisticals too. Thanks, Coach.